All right, so here we are back in my subtool with the geometry for this, this shape here. And what I want to do is I want to add like, a, I don't know, some kind of like a, like a washer thing and then a bolt in here. So, so when you apply this piece, the internal components are just brought along for the ride and then you can kind of split them out and do whatever you want to do. So I'm going to start with a torus. So we'll go over to our, our I guess I call it a ring here in ZBrush. And we'll go down to the initialize. And so we can leave these two where they are. Uh, the, the divide here, you can kind of see, especially if I put the wireframe on, like what's going on with this. So we don't really need too many, uh, too much geo here because we're going to, we're, we're going to end up doing a dynamic subdivision on it. And also you want to keep your geo for insert mesh geometry as cheap as possible because you could be applying it to something that's got a lot of geometry already and, and maybe you've got dynamic subdivisions turned on and so if your geo and your insert mesh brush is really high your dynamic uh, settings will be applied to the insert mesh as well so uh, just best practices is keep it cheap and it's also a good idea to keep your geometry regular so like don't put like a 7 and a 14 in there like if you can keep it uh, numbers that are nice and even and divisible by uh, by two, that's that's going to make your life a little bit easier. All right, so there is sure that'll work for our our little bolt thing there. So I'm going to make this poly mesh 3D, and we'll head back over here, and we'll do append. Here's our geo ring. You can see it's not quite in the right spot, or I mean, it's not quite the right uh, size. So we'll just make it a little smaller. And here you can also see how this is. Uh, different in terms of how um, curvy it is. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and by curvy I mean circular. Curvy is probably the wrong word there. I'm gonna reverse the subdivisions if I can. And now I'm just gonna move the stuff. I don't have my move brush. Just try to rebuild some of the circularness and I'm gonna turn symmetry on. Just trying to keep that, that distance there. It's, it's very, very subtle. And it's a little bit risky moving it by hand, but whatever. It'll be it'll be okay. And for this, what I want is a nice flat surface. So I'm going to go to the Z Modeler brush, and we're going to just pull out some of the edges here that are that are making it not as flat as I'd like. I think that's going to be okay. And I want to make it a little bit thicker. So the way I'm going to do that is we'll go to Select Lasso, grab the inside ring there. I'm going to invert it. Control W to put it on its own polygroup. And then we'll do an inflate polygroup all and just kind of pull that out. And now I'm going to add a little bevel and a bevel that same size, which I can get to just by clicking and we'll do a crease polygroup. So now that's what I get with my, my geo. So this thing can get a little bit bigger. I'd like it to be that's another thing you can do is like if, if we've got a little bit of a discrepancy in terms of the thickness there, you can just kind of obscure it and nobody will know the difference. And this, how this is going to be useful for your geometry is it's probably going to get looked at by a normal map and it's going to get baked down. So like the actual, like what's going on over here is, is probably not going to be seen. So it's not really as important for it to be just right, but hey, it's easy. So let's go ahead and we'll just add a crease over here. So that stays nice and sharp. And I'm gonna leave this piece in its current, let's see, what's the best way to do this? I wanna keep it cheap, right? So uh, we'll just leave it like that. So when I combine all the stuff, it's gonna look pretty crude, but it'll look nice once it's all been, it's just a simple dynamic subdivision. Uh, so let's see, all right. And you can see just by very uh, happy good luck, all this stuff lines up. It doesn't make any difference at all. It just makes my eyeballs happy. Okay, so let's do something very similar. We're gonna add, we'll just grab our little polysphere here. This is overkill, but I'm gonna I'm gonna use this as a, an opportunity to show you a little bit more with the Z modeler. So I'm gonna duplicate my polysphere. Once again, it's kind of useful and I'd like to just leave it alone. And I am going to put the top and bottom on their own uh, polygroups, and then we'll do crease polygroup and I can give this a few subdivisions so that it lines up mostly with what's going on here. So right now I have, if I hit solo, uh, let me delete my subdivisions. I have this top surface. 
which is what I'm actually looking for here. I'm, I'm going to throw this away, and on the bottom I don't need either, but it's a little bit uh, harder to do that because they're both in the same polygroup. So I'm going to delete hidden, do an auto groups, and then uh, just basically like control and shift to click on this and it'll isolate it and then I can delete hidden once again. So now all I have is this top surface. But it isn't circular. It isn't as circular as it needs to be. Again, this is overkill, but hopefully it will be somewhat useful. This, because it was sourced from a, a ring, is circular and looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And I'm going to, what I want is the inside thing to be the exact same curvature as the outside thing. And the easiest way to do that is I'm just going to use this face as my starting point, or this ring, I mean. So we'll do a delete hidden. I need to flip the face normals. And now I want to put a top on there. So there is a fill, where is it, or, or close hole. We'll do a thing at the right, but this geometry is nasty and isn't going to give us uh, nice consistent deformations. So what I want here is I'm actually going to use. Uh, looks like I used my I modified the top one. No big deal. I'm going to hold Shift and click this little arrow and I'll drop it to the bottom. So now I have this nice circular wall, and I have this nice clean but not circular top. So I'm going to combine these two together and then weld them up. So we're going to do a merge here, do a merge down. Now they're both visible. I'm just going to mask off and invert, scoot it down so that we're getting a little bit of, a, of an intersection there. Uh, we're going to center our tool here, transform tool, and then just kind of bring it in a little bit. So we can see what's going on in terms of the difference that we have. Uh oh, my guys just zoomed in on accident. It's a tablet. Um, so what I want to do is basically like merge these faces with these faces. So the probably the cheapest and easiest way to do it, I want to make sure this is still masked, is I'm just going to get this stuff like as close as possible. Well, let me show you the, the, the less uh, elegant way. So if I mouse over a vert, I can go to uh, Stitch. And then you just click the first one and the second one. The first one and the second one, right? So that's totally fine. But in this case, I think I can probably get them like a little bit closer to where they're ultimately going to need to be an unmask. And then down here in modified topology, there is a weld points. Uh, and you might need to increase the weld distance. There we go. So you can get it all done uh, very easily. So uh, if I was thinking a little more clearly, I probably would have duplicated it and had one down in the bottom there, but we're getting a little close on time. So now I've got this nice circular geometry, which is what I was hoping for, that fits very cleanly inside. Let me see, we'll hide this guy. So we can go ahead and kick on dynamic sub D for the rest of the stuff so we can we can see what we're looking at. So this is the, the curvature here is, is what I was hoping to preserve. And now that we've got this simple geo, what I can do is we'll just add another edge, do a little insert there, put that on its own polygroup, I'm going to put an inflate on there, increase the polygroups. Something like that, pull it in, whatever. And then for uh, whatever we're going to do here, I'm going to, it'll throw off this, the, the curvature a bit, but it really doesn't make that much difference. Or maybe I can just do it with these faces here. So I'm going to put everything on one polygroup. Ooh, we're getting close to time here. How fast can I go? I'm going to expand. Whoops, I just want to expand my, my little polygroup. So I'll mask it and then unmask. So I'm going to kind of expand it out a little bit and make it a little bit more narrow. And then I'm going to uh, turn on symmetry. So I only have to do this, uh, I guess, once. I'm going to hit Y. So I go to my transpose tool, which I like a lot. I should probably do a dedicated video just on this. I'm going to go ahead and get all these guys scaled nice and flat. And then we'll do an inset. And we will go ahead and 
do an inflate, increase polygroups, and then in this case, now well, we can just see what it looks like. Okay, well, I think that's probably just fine. So there's our little quick, quick and dirty bolt detail. And in the next video, I'll show you how to make a uh, an insert mesh brush out of it and how to save it so you can keep it around for next time.